Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's small business webinar. My name is Paul Hill, and I'm with Montana State University, and happy to welcome you to um, this first webinar of May. I uh, just want to remind you, we are recording uh, the webinar. We'll be posting it to the website that's in the chat box there. Hopefully, you can see that chat box uh, in the lower um, portion of your screen. If you can see it, there's a little bump out. Uh, if you use your cursor, you can see an icon that looks like a circle with a, uh, uh, a little bump out at the, the bottom left corner. You can just click on that and that'll uh, open up your chat box. Uh, feel free to use that chat box if you have any questions for us, uh, tech questions or any questions for our presenter today. Um, and he is encouraging questions throughout the presentation. I'll be monitoring those, so feel free to ask those, type those in uh, when they come up. So just ask that you keep your uh, line muted uh, to avoid any background noise uh, throughout the, the webinar. And then at the end of the presentation, um, if you do wanna ask uh, questions uh, via your audio, you can unmute yourself. Um, Today's webinar is sponsored by uh, Montana State University Extension Community Development Program, the Montana Economic Developers Association, the Small Business Development Centers, which are affiliated with the Montana Department of Commerce and the U.S. Small Business Administration, with additional support from the Great Falls Development Authority and the University of Montana. Uh, again, if you have any tech support, um, feel free to use that chat box. You can also uh, call the number. Uh, that's in there, or uh, feel free to email uh, me. Uh, my address is in there as well. And again, um, you can access uh, information about our past and future webinars at the website that's in the chat box. Um, so now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter. Uh, Nathan Reif is the Business Development Officer with the Great Falls Development Authority. And um, Nathan, I'll turn it over to you. You've got your slides all set there, so go ahead and take it away. Thank you. So this is business reopening toolkit uh, planning for our new normal. Uh, this is actually the second one we've done. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, so my name is Nathan Reif. I, I got a bachelor's in philosophy and religion at Concordia College Moorhead uh, and then got my master's of organizational management at the University of Providence. Uh, I am now a business officer. I started in October of last year. Uh, 14, uh, before that, I worked at the University of Providence, uh, first as an assistant wrestling coach, and then uh, in their student development department in uh, several different. The agenda today, so uh, we'll go through legal requirements, human resources and facilities, financial stability and liquidity, and market demand. Uh, the first webinar that we did last Friday on this subject hit a lot harder on legal requirements and human resources and facilities. Uh, this one's gonna focus more on financial stability and liquidity and market demand. Uh, we will hit legal requirements. Uh, why are these important? Uh, one of the reasons they're important and knowing the why is important is because people tend to follow rules that they uh, understand or understand the why behind. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're meeting legal requirements, partly because we want to have satisfied customers and we want our customers to be safe. Uh, if they are, they're going to come back, they're going to be happier, they're going to be more engaged. The same is true with employees. We want our employees to be safe. Uh, all of us as business people care about who they are uh, and want them to be satisfied as well. If they're feeling safe, they're gonna be uh, able to provide better support and better engagement. And then we also want the ability to continue operating in a legal fashion. So we wanna follow the rules. We want to do what's right and uh, we also want to protect against general liability. We've been getting this question a fair amount, and we're still kind of trying to figure out what that's going to look like uh, from the federal level and the state level. But if we're following the rules, we're more likely to be protected from that general liability. I went into more detail on this last time, but our main resources are going to be the experts. None of us are health experts, or most of us aren't. Maybe there are a few that are on. Uh, but we want to turn to experts, see what they say, 
uh, especially during this time, going to the CDC's website, looking at Montana uh, State website and see what's required for the different phases as they open. It's going to be really smart. And then uh, you want to go to your county health departments. Certain counties uh, are requiring more than others. And so it's a really great website. Uh, you can find your county health department and their resources uh, by going on to the link. One of the things that I know at least Cascade County has done is they have created uh, sheets and spreadsheets and different stuff like that that you can fill out so you can track stuff. And it's just a good way to organize, especially as we're particularly busy. Being organized in a particular way allows us to uh, put less mental energy toward uh, those kind of day-to-day -day things. Uh, most of us aren't particularly good at following those some resources to help us. We look at human resources and facilities. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we're going to have to put in place, new policies, procedures, uh, figuring out what do you do, how do you do this, um, where do you do it. Some of this you may want to outsource. So there may be cleaning companies that aren't cleaning as many offices because people are out of their offices that may be creating resources in your area and uh, again, it, it's always nice to be able to turn to an expert and be able to say, okay, how do you do this? What do I do? Um, and then there is that problem of where do I purchase it? Let's say you're going to have masks, making sure you have enough on hand that you don't run out, uh, especially as we kind of uh, have run into supply chain issues. Um, last week, if you want to go in, there, there's a lot more detail. Uh, in our opening toolkit, we had some uh, spreadsheets that you can fill out that kind of take examples and just let you kind of fill in all the information, like who's in charge, uh, how are you going to do this, uh, when are you going to schedule it, that kind of thing. But as we're taking an example of like reducing by six feet, anything that you can do that makes this a mechanical as opposed to a behavioral uh, issue, it's going to make it easier for your customers and your employees. So even just simply putting tape down makes it a lot easier for your customers to see, okay, this is what six feet looks like. Our normal distance from each other is may vary, but none of it's as big as six feet. So it's not a natural thing for us to do. So anything you can do to kind of help uh, mechanically put that in, because our behavioral tool this becomes more normal or going to break down a little bit more. And so having a mechanical solution uh, just makes it easier to deal with. Um, and again, if you want to see more detail on kind of the spreadsheet and how you might uh, track that out, uh, you can watch our uh, previous webinar or you can look at our toolkit. With that as well, you're going to deal with a lot of changing dynamics. And so going through and creating a list of each of these is going to be important. So what are your essential employees? Who are they? Where are they? How do you replace them if they're out sick or something's changed? Essential business function. So if you have an a employee that runs an essential business or deals with a critical input, let's say your suppliers, you have a general manager that always deals with those suppliers. Now, this would be good practice anyways to kind of sit down and say, okay, where do we have that list of all the suppliers? Uh, but I know in most of the businesses that I've worked at, somebody kind of took care of that and I didn't have to think about it. So easy to not worry about. This is a time where you really want to make sure those things are in place. They're written down, you know where they're at, and you can find them even if you can't go into work. So let's say we shut things down again. You want to be able to get those online to find them, to look them up. Um, you need a contact tree, so you make sure that you can reach out to employees. Uh, how are you going to do that? So creating as many plans as you can for the possibility of changing dynamics is really going to help you function uh, throughout this uh, time. And especially as things change up and down, we're in a phased recovery. Will that phase move forward? Will it have to move back? and making plans to kind of deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So if you use that toolkit, you can kind of go in and at least plan out some stuff. Uh, we have some blank forms in there so that you can print them out, uh, write them down. That way, everybody knows where they're at, everybody knows where to find them, and they can use them. Anytime there is uncertainty, people take advantage of that to uh, try to earn some money for themselves. So cyber threats have definitely come up. We, we emphasize this every time we talk. Make sure that your I know I'm working from home and a lot of other people are. That opens people up to cyber attacks in a way that is different. Uh, there's a lot of loan programs that are going on. Uh, so people are calling and asking about, oh, well, I'm with a small business uh, authority. Uh, and they're asking to get, for you to give personal information. Make sure you have the right protocols in place. Talk to your uh, employees about it, make sure that they know as well so that they don't give up information that uh, endangers your company. Um, as we all know, there's a lot of obstacles that are thrown in our way uh, right now. Um, you know, whether it's uh, a slow inter internet connection at your home, um, whether it is not being able to seat as many people, as those opt obstacles up, there's going to be opportunities as well. Um, and I talked about this and kind of a way to lay this out uh, in the previous podcast. So I won't spend as much time on it today, but you want to make sure that you're looking for those opportunities and you're seeing that uh, as a chance to maybe take an opportunity and make money uh, in a different way or to make yourself profitable. As you do this, make sure to include your bail team, which is your bankers, accountants, insurance, and uh, lawyers. Keep them involved because you want to make sure that what you're doing, that opportunity, is a legal opportunity uh, and that you don't accidentally get yourself uh, in a situation that causes you problems down the road. So we're going to focus a lot more on our financial and market demand. Uh, so if we think about it, what levers can you manipulate to ensure positive cash flow? So some things are going to be in your control. Those things you want to focus on. So maybe I can't change that I have 50% capacity in my store, but maybe I can control uh, takeout options. Right. And then for the things that you can't control, you need to plan for those. So we may not be able to control what phase we're in, or whether our customers are initially comfortable coming back. But we can plan for that, and we can do our best to make it work. Uh, and with that, and, and this for me is the hardest, don't waste energy, either mental or physical, on things outside your control. It's easy to spend a lot of time worrying about things that I don't have any control over. And this is hard to do, but as much as you can, don't waste your energy there. You have a limited amount, put your energy on the things that you can control. So liquidity. So liquidity is your available liquid assets. Uh, basically, this is cash. So what cash do you have? And then some things we sort of think of as liquid, but you always need to consider, especially in a downturn, how much value can they have? So a tractor is not the same as cash. I can't automatically sell it, especially in a downturn, I may have to uh, lose some money. Somebody may be getting a really great deal on a tractor if I have to turn that tractor into cash during a downturn. And this is true for a lot of different uh, things in your business. So we wanna make sure that you have the liquidity uh, that you have, especially should this go on and banks maybe tighten their lending practices. Um, the government has done a lot to keep this from happening, but if it does happen, you want to make sure that you have the cash that you need when you need it. Um, and that takes kind of some reflection back. So as we ref as you reflect back, um, you want to ask yourself, with this, um, how was my cash flow beforehand? And you want to be honest. Uh, you know, if you had to take out loans beforehand then be honest about that. Why did I have to take those out? Now, it could be that you were flush with cash, doing great, really profitable before, and you just need to return to profitability. You just need to get back on the track that I was on. Um, 
but it may be that you didn't have good cash flow to begin with. So um, this is similar to, you know, a lot of us around the new year try to stay in shape. Uh, you know, some of us do good at that, some of us don't. Um, that's kind of the same thing. What kind of business, what kind of shape are you in? And when I, so I went in for knee surgery and was talking to my doctor and the doctor said, you know, the biggest thing you can do before you go in for your knee surgery is be in as good a shape as you can be in because the stronger you are going in, the stronger you are going out. So kind of be aware of that. So as you think about that, one way to do that is looking at a 13 week rolling cash flow. And if you look at this website and uh, it's got a great tutorial on how to do this, how to look at it. And um, it's a great way, especially in changing times like now, to be aware of what's happening. Most of us can't really project out where we're going to be, but if we're looking at it, seeing it, seeing it in a spreadsheet in a way that you can visualize it, then you're gonna have a better idea going forward. And during this time, especially during this time as you're reopening, or if you're going along and just the uh, pandemic has hit you in certain ways, monitoring that weekly is going to be really useful. You're going to want to be able to say, okay, this is bringing money in, this isn't, and how do I adjust, right? I'm not making as much as I thought projected, you know, do I need to cut staffing? Do I need to talk to my bank? Uh, do I need to apply for a line of credit? You know, what, what is that going to look like? That's going to be based on each individual company, but you're going to want to monitor that a lot more closely and make sure that you have enough so that it's not you know, even three days before payroll and you realize you don't have enough to cover that and need to make adjustments. So let's say that you don't have the cash uh, flow. Um, you're not in as good a shape as you'd like to be. How do you change that? Uh, one is to set goals. You know, what is your liquidity goal? Do you need to have two months of liquidity? Do you need three? Uh, and then how do you improve that? So you can kind of do some forecasting of looking at, all right, you know, if I put $1,000 toward my cash assets, my cash position, where, when will I get to my goal? With that, and I've always been told this is, the only way to do that in some ways is to pay yourself first. It's really easy, especially during tough times, to kind of hit the end of the month and you're always out of money. So there's not enough money to go into a savings account. So this is particularly hard now if you're kind of just getting by. And so I don't want to minimize that, but as much as you can, you know, especially if we see a improvement in your business, making sure to increase your cash position is going to be really important. It's always easier if you make it automatic. If I had to decide at the end of each month how much I was going to put in retirement, probably wouldn't put as much in as I can set when uh, I'm just thinking, all right, we'll just make it automatic and make it part of your budget. Okay, it's just budgeting in, all right, how am I going to get to that cash position that I need? And let's just put that in beforehand so it's not an afterthought. It's not something I'm doing uh, after the fact. Um, and as we think about that and think about how do we do that, you think about it, there's only really four ways to impact net profit. Um, so those are sell more units, raise your prices, decrease variable costs, and decrease fixed costs. So how do we sell more units? How do we get more of those bread and butter uh, units to come off our shelf? Uh, you know, maybe it is during this time to do more online sales. Maybe I'm reaching a particular way and maybe I have to offer sales on something. Consumers may be particularly sensitive to price right now during this uncertainty. Maybe it's leaning on your particular customers that are particularly good customers. Um, one of the things that's going to be hard is raising prices. People well, are sensitive to that. So um, there was a true value store in Cutbank and one of the things that they did to kind of try to sell more units is they bought this big giant blue tub of 
uh, hand sanitizer and for free, they will fill up your hand sanitizer bottle. Well, they don't make any money on that, but if people are coming in, they're more likely to pick something up. They're more likely to be appreciative and buy from them as opposed maybe to picking it up on Amazon because they've already come in to fill that bottle. So uh, there's kind of some creative ways of selling more units, but uh, figuring out that and how to do that. And if you can't do either of those, then the only way to do is decrease variable costs or fixed costs. Maybe you've already talked to your landlord to see if there's a break you can get for a while on your rent. Uh, maybe you've gone to a different supplier to pick up a, as a cheaper option. Uh, maybe you've had to not bring a uh, hourly employee on. Uh, maybe you've had to not pay yourself, things like that. So those are hard decisions and they're gonna be company by company based, uh, but uh, you're gonna kind of have to look at all of those if you're going to improve your cash position. So that'll include things like reviewing your business plan, trying to figure out, you know, I've cut expenses, uh, as I reopen, what expenses are going to come back online? Um, you know, how am I going to pay attention to that? And that's that 13 week rolling average. If I increase expenses and, and all of a sudden my revenue is not keeping up with that, you know, maybe I need to make sure that I adjust those. Um, maybe you've got new product lines, new service lines, things that have come online, like uh, online drink orders or takeout drink orders. You know, how, how do you look at those new product lines? Um, do they continue? Were they making you money? So this is something that Jason always emphasizes is that, you know, if I'm losing money on a product, if I sell more of it, I just lose more money. So if delivery is costing me money, then maybe I need to lose that as I'm kind of ramped up. It worked because it kept people engaged and kept employees around, but maybe as I ramp up, I need to drop that. Maybe I need to double down on it. That's gonna kind of depend on your business um, and kind of always keeping track of what those differences are. Lastly, there's, there's a lot of loans, grants. Montana just came out with a bunch of grant opportunities that opened up this morning. Uh, generally, if you can get money that you don't have to pay back, it's a good idea, but you need to make sure that you fit that program and that you're doing the monitoring and reporting that is required. Uh, if you don't know if you can do that, if you need to check in, it's another time, reach out to your bail team. Uh, and make sure to know all the rules. You know, if you took out the PPP program, make sure you're using it how it's supposed to be used. Uh, put reminders in if, if there's reporting deadlines, if there's things that you need to do. Most of us are really down on our bandwidth right now. We're really struggling to keep up with all the things that we're thinking about, especially with our stress level going up. Uh, if you can put tools in, if you can help have other people help you, that's gonna make a ton of difference with those requirements. Then if we look at market demand, uh, consumer demand has changed and it will probably not come back to what it was. Um, it may in certain areas, but it will certainly be changed. Um, if you haven't yet, look at our hibernation toolkit. It's got a lot of ways to kind of reflect on what your business is, uh, what your business is becoming, where it could go, things like that. Uh, in this podcast, we don't have enough time to get into that detail, but it's really valuable as a resource. Um, and then also the resiliency guide gives you a lot of tools for, hey, what can you do at different times? But as we're looking at market demand, you want to be realistic and honest. Okay, just because you can have 50% capacity doesn't mean that you will. There may be a certain percentage of your customers that aren't yet ready to come back. Um, so you need to know your customers, know where they're at. And a lot of us when, or a lot of businesses as things were going well, they didn't have to really drill down on that, figure that out. But as a crisis hits us, we're going to need to do a better job of looking at that because we don't have enough revenue that we can waste it on uh, not getting the returns that we need to get. So, you know, what has changed? If we look at like Disney parks, crowded bars, uh, airplanes, look at those pictures, 
are people going to be comfortable being in an atmosphere like this after it? Uh, and remember, to be a business, the two things that are required are a paying customer. So I guess just, that's one thing. Um, but we need to make sure we get them back. How have things changed? How do we know about our customers? And how do we make them feel safe and comfortable? If you look at the picture of the airplane, you know, would that make you feel comfortable? Are you feeling like you're separated enough with that? Um, and this is going to be kind of a, at all levels, we're going to have to make these adjustments and find those paying customers. With that, you need to reflect on who you are. Um, you're going to want to make sure that as we kind of evolve and change, it's easy to kind of just let that happen to us. We're going to be better off if we know our business's personality because you're going to be able to focus on this is the core of who I am. Now, this is a little bit like personality for people. As a person, okay, I can do things that aren't in my personality, but it requires extra energy. You want to know when you're doing that and kind of make sure that you uh, can kind of adjust back to your core. The other thing about knowing your personality, who you are, what the heart and soul of your business is, it's going to allow you to tell your story. And telling your story now is going to be even more important than ever. So let's say you're a pizza shop and uh, you're hearing about uh, all these people that are making sourdough starters. It's gonna allow you to say, okay, at our personality, we have a sourdough starter that we make all our dough from. How can we tell that story to everybody to kind of make it relatable and show them that we're like them and that we're connected with them? And this is gonna start with empathy. And that's the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. So if you can understand your customer, know who they are from their perspective, you're going to do better. Um, and especially during this time, we want to lead with empathy. People understand and know that when they're understood, they're more likely to spend money in your store. They're going to want you to be successful, and that's going to make you more likely to be successful. And it's also going to make them more likely uh, to continue to come back and to relate to you. We know you can do this, and this is pulled directly out of the hibernation toolkit, is look at yourself after. Okay, do this reflection, write down, what was I like before, what was I like after? What are my suppliers like, what are they like after? Um, same with customers, and then you can kind of come down to, based on all that, your business was this before, what is your business now? And then you can make that decision about, all right, does that fit with who I am and how that works? With this, you want to try stuff, okay? That lean business model where you kind of get rid of uh, extra waste, but you're trying something, learn from it, try another iteration. You know, maybe you want to try uh, take out drinks. Does that work? Maybe you want to try a... Uh, buy dinner and you can take breakfast with you to go for tomorrow morning. If we think about this time, one of the things that crises do is create a lot of problems and businesses are really good at finding solutions. And that's where your opportunity is. If you have a problem, okay, you find a solution, it's an opportunity for you to make money and for people to engage with you. So down to my final thoughts, this is not a time to go it alone. You're not going to be able to survive and thrive in the way that you would like if you're not getting help. Uh, that's at bail team, support advisors, GFDA, SBDC. Reach out to them, find support, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, take those opportunities. Um, SBDC's coaching is free, so make sure to reach out to them. So does GFDA. Uh, but, you know, find that um, and use the resources that are available to you to make sure that you have what you need and can reach out. Um, this is GFDA's coaches. Uh, if you want to look into them, you can look at the other regional offices as well if you're outside uh, the Golden Triangle and make sure to stay connected with us. So, Paul, that's my presentation. Um, are there any questions that I can answer? Great.
we've got a few minutes for questions. If anyone wants to type them in the chat box or unmute yourself and um, hopefully it doesn't get too chaotic. We don't have too big a group uh, on the line today. So feel free to type those in. We did have um, an individual asking about where the presentations, uh, the past recordings are. Um, and again, uh, just direct you to our, uh, that link in the, the top of the chat there, uh, the smallbusiness.html site. And uh, Jason's also um, has a link as well to the SBDC uh, site where you can access uh, past. I'll also be pushing out the recording uh, via the MSU listserv. So, yep, uh, if you're not a member of that listserv, feel free to uh, just shoot me an email and I'd be happy to subscribe. You can stay updated on um, past, uh, present, and future webinars. So, we do have a few minutes for questions if anyone wants to type them in. While we're waiting for that, um, Nathan, do you have any, um, any other thoughts on um, kind of the road ahead, or do you have any final comments for us uh, in terms of what you're expecting um, maybe the next few weeks in terms of uh, your work there at the office? I think trying to figure out, like, I guess how the grants are going to work is going to be uh, an important thing, I think. Um, I see as one of the uh, big things is kind of the uncertainty that everybody is feeling uh, and how to plan for an uncertain future. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, a lot that is up in the air as much as everybody is trying to plan. I think that's going to be uh, the more time you can spend in reflection and planning, the better off you're going to be. And uh, the more you can improve cash flow uh, in whatever way, uh, that liquidity I think is going to be pretty important. Great, okay. And last chance for questions. Questions or comments, feel free to type them into the chat box. And seeing none, um, all right, well, maybe we'll just wrap up. Uh, Nathan, any other closing remarks that you'd like to make? Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, the other thing is, you know, pay attention to your customers. I think uh, now is a great time to engage them uh, because I think they're paying a little more attention sometimes. And so engaging customers, uh, knowing what they want and who they are is going to be really important. Great. Well, Nathan, thanks so much for the great information today and uh, to all of you for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. We'll be posting the recording as soon as it's available, uh, probably um, uh, tomorrow or Monday. And uh, feel free to share any of the links. All of our recordings, uh, accessing them are free, um, as well as the listserv and uh, future webinars. So with that, I wish you all a good day. Please stay healthy and stay positive. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Thanks, Paul.